Good morning, dear Stitchers. I'm welcoming you all back. I am Judy Whitman with JBW Designs. I so appreciate all the um, Stitchers who are subscribing and we have many new ones this week, so that's very exciting. I wish I could see your little faces while I'm talking. It would probably make things a lot easier. But um, I'm very excited if you're just joining the channel for the first time. So it's a beautiful day here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's sunny and perfect temperatures. So we can open all the doors and windows. Um, let's see, what do I wanna tell you this morning? I have a whole list of things. One of the things that I thought you might be interested in in is that I do other things other than stitching. You know, we all have other loves in our lives. And one of the things that um, I've done for many, many years with a, a great group of women is a painted furniture class. So if you look at the desk right behind me here, my work table, that's one of the pieces that I painted years ago. And as I show you different parts of the office, you'll see that almost every table and cabinet has been hand painted too. So that's just a really fun, uh, a different thing than stitching, but similar too because it's creative. I also love to garden and that's kind of a, actually, um, I came to that later in life and I love doing that. So many weekends I'm out in the yard working on that. And of course, you know about the antiquing part of it. And I also love to read. So it's hard to fit in all those things that you love to do, I will admit. So let's get back to why you're here today. I want to talk about some of the things from the last video that um, I missed. Um, and then I also want to address uh, a comment that was made because I think it's an important one. So in the last video, it was kind of funny, really. I was showing you all four of the new designs, which the models are back on the table over there. And this little model was from the candy cane pocket. And for some reason, it was gone. I just could not find it. Well, after the video ended, I realized, oh my gosh, it was under my chair. So here's the little um, piece that is the candy cane pocket. You can, you know, the directions for how to finish are in the booklet. And as you know from last week, this is what the booklet looks like. So there's the missing model. I have many, I'm surrounded by stuff here, incidentally. If I had claustrophobia, I, I would feel, definitely feel that today. <clears throat> the other thing that came up in the comment section had to do with stitching over one. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to put that question aside for a little bit, but I'm going to show you um, some ornaments later. Um, and when I show you the ornaments, many of those are stitched over one. And I want to address some hints that I have. I am definitely not an expert on that, but I am happy to share what I know. So that might help some of you who are thinking about doing it, who or who have been um, scared to start. So I want to tell you about some of my mail. Um, one of these is actually a letter that I received a long time ago, and I keep forgetting to pull it out to thank the uh, Tara who sent it. She sent the cutest little card with a golden retriever, which went right to my heart because we used to have goldens. And then she did the sweetest thing. She crocheted some tiny, tiny little, let me get this a little higher, spread them out, some tiny little snowflakes that are in pink and green and white. And she thought that those would look so sweet in my office. So thank you, Tara. I plan to hang those up in the windows, actually, because I think they will look so darling. So that was one of my long ago notes. And then I also received a note from Stephanie at StitchCon because I had sent a trunk show there and she wrote to thank me for sending it. It was very well received, so that was exciting. And then my last note actually was from Laura Duet, who is part of uh, Brenda and the Serial Starter duo that do floss tubes. And this is so neat because we figured out that she lives in a town that I visit at times outside of Chicago. 
so we're thinking about getting together. So I, I really hope that works. Um, I want to acknowledge several Floss Tube uh, people who have really uh, reached out to help me. And that's what I love about our community. We support one another. We try to help each other uh, grow and succeed in what we love to do. And so one of the Floss Tube um, video girls is Annie from the Proper Stitcher. She's from Knoxville, Tennessee, and she has been showing some of my booklets in her videos. And then just last night, the Vintage Stitcher, who is in Iron Mountain, Michigan, uh, did a wonderful little segment because I sent her some books for giveaways. The wonderful thing about Artie, I'm sure you've had this happen to you too, is that sometimes someone's voice will trigger a memory. And Artie's um, accent, if you can call it that, because she's so close to Wisconsin, reminds me of my relatives from Milwaukee, which is where I grew up. And so when I heard her voice, I thought, oh, I can hear all of uh, my aunts and uncles and cousins because they have that same uh, intonation. So that was fun to, to put that together. It triggered old memories. So last weekend was the Allegan Antique Fair again, and I had another wonderful day there. A, a good friend from Des Moines came to visit and another friend here in Kalamazoo. The three of us went to the market together. And I just got little things, but it was as always fun. This one just cracks me up. So, so this was a little book that I call, I found, that's called The Rabbity Buns. And, um, I guess what caught my eye is because I have many rabbits in my collection, I thought, oh, I think I need to do this or buy this. But the other part of it is that I also have a collection of silhouettes of um, my children and grandchildren, et cetera, and animals, et cetera. And I thought, oh, this would be darling to, to frame and put the cover in my silhouette collection. So there are sweet silhouettes throughout the book. So that was kind of a funny find. And then I also got, I love to collect linens because I make them into towels for our screen porch. So I got a wonderful uh, linen towel. I usually get reds or blues. I found an old um, DMC book, which was quite a find. I did not look up to see, I don't know if it will tell what the publication date was. No, it doesn't. But um, it has some sweet alphabets in it, etc. So that was a fun find. And then, oh, I also got some new blue and white china for my collection downstairs. I bought a plate and what else did I get? Oh, a, a darling little um, dish. I found some antique buttons and I'm always on the hunt for these because I often use these in my designs. So if you're an antiquer and like looking for something like that, that's always fun to do. And I found another, I didn't even take it out of the bag. I won't, I won't bother because it's gonna crinkle too much. But I found another handmade strawberry. And I didn't know I was collecting these, but suddenly I am. Uh, a collection starts very slowly. So the other thing we did, on our journey last weekend when our friend was here is she's an avid stitcher which is wonderful and so we went to our um, shop that is nearest to us and the name of that shop I forgot to uh, make a sign for it I'll have to do that next time it's called Stitching Bits and Bobs it's in Plainwell Michigan it's owned by a couple named Bobby and Cam they have a fabulous selection of fibers and lots of fabrics and when I go there I'm always on the hunt for fabrics for my stash. So I bought um, a Zweigert uh, Castle Linen and it's just so interesting to me. Up, I started out stitching and I stitched only on 28 count linen and if you're on Ada that's fine too. Whatever, stitch on what you love. Um, and then I gradually moved to 32 and then about a couple weeks ago, I picked up a piece of linen and I started stitching one of my new models. And I thought, I think this is smaller than 32. And I measured it and it turned out to be 40 count, which I wasn't sure I can do, could do. But if I use my glasses and magnification, 
and you only have to use one strand of floss. I'm loving it. So that's that's my new find. So I showed you the Newcastle linen. I also got a piece of Picture This Plus Bashful, which is a beautiful pale pink. These are for future designs. I bought a lakeside linen called Mount Baker Blue. You know I love uh, pale colors and pastels. I also bought a piece of Zweigert Newcastle linen that's a cream. I bought quite a bit, you can see. And then I also got a legacy linen uh, that's called Old White. So those are going in my um, bins that I have, uh, fabrics that I'll use going forward in the future. Um, I, when I talked to Kim last week, we were talking about fibers because he'd just gotten a big shipment. And he was saying some of the fabric companies are six months behind in being able to ship their products. And I know the fiber companies are struggling too. So I always say to you, please be patient. These shop owners want to get your orders out, but they are sometimes so tied by their, their deliveries and what they're getting. So I've talked too much and I haven't shown you anything. So what have I been working on? I um, am stitching new models. I, I have so many things going. I'm like going in 10 directions because I'm stitching new models and finishing new models. I'm charting new things and they're all different. So that's how you have to do this. You're, you finish one thing, but then you're working on another. So it's, um, I'm sure you would, if you looked at some of the things I'm doing, you'd think, my goodness, she, this woman is confused. So um, I want to show you, I want to give you a sneak peek of one of the new designs that's coming out. And I posted that on Instagram and my friends page. And I'm going to show you only a part of it, but I finished it this last week. I think I'm going to show you a different part first. So this design actually does not have a name to it yet. But what is so interesting to me is that I have stitched three models of this piece, and each one is has an entirely different look. So this one, I think I talked about it maybe two videos ago, is done on a polka dot linen from Zweigert. I love the way it looks because it's a Christmas design. It kind of gives that feel of snowflakes. So that's one version of this new model, which incidentally does not have a name. So I've been asking for suggestions. I've got a ton of names on my list. And I'll, uh, Don and I, my helper, will choose our favorite to name this piece. So then I also stitch this piece over one on red. And that was what I showed, I think, in my Instagram. And it has a little ribbon trim on it. it has ribbon here and here, and I finished this uh, this week. And look at how different that looks from the first model I showed you on the polka dot. And then I'm waiting for the third model to come back because it is stitched on pale blue on white and the, again, the look is entirely different. So I love it when you stitchers take my pattern and say, I'm going to stitch this on another fabric in another fiber. And then we all get to see um, how clever you are and how fun it is to change things up. So that design I just showed you, the nameless design, is actually part of a series that I've done over the years. I think I've showed these before, but it's fun to see them again. I have one of the models up here in my office to show you. So this is similar. It's called Tidings of Joy. You can see what that's looked like. It's stitched over one on a 28 count. I'll talk about the over one later. So that was one in the series. I've forgotten in which order they came. Another in that series is O Christmas Tree. And these were all finished by my professional finisher with lots of a variety of trims, which I'm going to encourage you to think about when you finish some of your designs. Uh, find some ribbons and buttons that you might be able to embellish your designs with. And then the third one in that series is Joy Noel. So you can see they're all quite similar. They all have a Christmassy motif, but each one, each design is different. So those are the three in that series of red, and you can stitch them over two. They look darling over two also. 
So, um, I want to show you, um, let's see, what else is on my list? Um, I have been working on getting a design ready for Needlework Galleria. And I've talked about this a little before. Needlework Galleria is a show that's open to the public. It is held in um, St. Charles, Missouri. It is at the end of September. If you go to their website, needleworkgalleria.com, you can look and find out all the information. And I am going to be teaching a class for them. So this week I designed a piece for what's, I'm going to teach two classes actually. I'm going to teach a finishing class of smalls. I'm going to show you those in a minute. And I'm also going to do a round robin. And the round robin is really fun. Um, you buy, um, I think, a ticket um, for a class that lasts an hour. And there are four designers that are part of that class. And we come in for each four 15 minutes. And we describe our project that is in the kit that they're getting. And we describe a brief description on how to finish it. And then at the end of the hour, they walk away with four new designs. And uh, many of them are Christmas because we're thinking that, of course, going into uh, the fall. So um, let's see. I want to think about here what I'm doing. So one of the things that, uh, let's go back to the over one. Do I seem scattered? I think, I think I'm very scattered this week. So I'm going to show you a number of designs that are worked over one. I work all of my over one on 28 count fabric because I can see it with magnification. I'm going to encourage you to put your fabric on either a hoop or Q-snaps because that keeps the fabric taut and it opens the holes. I will encourage you, of course, to use magnification. The beauty of working over one is that you only have to use one ply. I'm going to pull that a little closer uh, to, do, to work all of your colors. And I think one of the most important things you need to know when you're working over one is that I, and I say I'm not an expert. I'll tell you about a friend of mine who is. Um, I work... Um, I complete each cross stitch over the single thread before I go on to the next one, which is a little different than our usual cross stitch because we work them all usually in a row if that's possible. The other thing that you have to be careful about is it's very easy for your stitch to fall, if you've done tried it before, to fall kind of under the threads. And I'm sure you all know this, but one of the things about stitching on linen is that it is a woven fabric. So there's always a vertical thread on top of an intersection or a horizontal thread. And when you're doing a cross stitch over the vertical thread, this I'm talking about over one now, that cross stitch will, will stay in place because the vertical thread is holding it in place. But when you move over to do the next stitch and you're crossing over a horizontal thread, sometimes your stitch wants to slip under. So the hints that I have are you can either reverse the direction, you can do the first stitch one, two, and then reverse the direction on this one, but that then causes problems for the next stitch. So I would do the stitch just as you usually do, lower left to upper right, but I would have a very even tension. Don't pull too tight, your stitch is going to fall away. So I hope that helps you just a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you more over ones, and then if I haven't covered really what you needed to know about stitching over one, please make a comment and we'll come back and address that in the next video. So let's see here. I, I should show you the book that these came from. I have, all right, so I'm going to pull out another over one. And you can see it's a little Scandinavian sled. And I have a set of books that are actually, mm, they were designed and released about seven years ago. 
And so these last two models that I've shown you are from three books called Scandinavian Ornaments. I'll try to show you separately. One, uh, no, let's do two next. Two is the next one. And then uh, three is the last one. Now, a lot of these ornaments are in my ornament collection booklets, but not all of them are. So if you were interested in these books, as I say, I still have some copies left, but not a lot. So check with your shop or write to me. Um, I think they're so sweet. So the next ones I want to show you are, see if I can pull the book for this one. Here's another ornament stitched over one. It just has, uh, has three colors in it, so it's just a little green red and there's a little brown in the wing. And this one design comes from the Christmas Tree Collection 8 booklet. And you know me from listening to other videos. I love my series. I think there might be 10, hmm, I'll have to check. I think there are 10 books in the Christmas Tree series. Each book has two trees. You can see here they can be stitched over two. Here's the design over two, and I'm holding the design over one. They're really fast to stitch. That's the beauty of them, whether you do them over two or over one. You could probably do a tree in two nights. So that's another um, part of my collection. Oh, I forgot to turn my phone off. Just one second. All right, we'll answer that later. Um, I want you to think about uh, Christmas in July designs because I think that would be so much fun for you to find something small that you thought you could finish um, just to get a head start on your Christmas stitching. So another design that I want to show you, let's see where the booklet is for that, uh, this too was done a while ago, is the French Country Snow Globe. And that too you can see has been done over one and this is what the booklet looks like. So if you're thinking about Christmas in July and you want something small and you want to get it done, this would be the thing to do. All of these models that I'm showing you are examples of what I am going to be teaching in my Needlework Galleria class in September. So what I wanted to do in that class is show you a variety of shapes, whether it's a triangle, a circle, kind of an unusual shape of the snow globe. Uh, it could be a stocking. And I want I want to teach you how to finish these and I've talked about these in my other videos. You can go back and look at them because it mainly involves making a template before you cut out your cardboard. So this little stocking one, I have forgotten well, which book this comes from. But I believe, you know that I've done a couple of ornament, let me put this down, collection books. I believe that one that I just showed you, yes, it's in Christmas Ornament Collection 2. And then each one of these ornament collections has either, uh, has 20 designs in each booklet. And they've been culled from all of my past Christmas design booklets. So... That is that. So now I want to talk about um, doing a sled. And here is a little, I have, I think, four books that have sled designs. Uh, there's Sledding Snowman, there's Sledding Santa, and there's little green sleds and little red sleds. And I think I showed you one of these last week. So here's the little red sled. And I, I promised that I would talk to you about how do you get this shape how do you make a template for that? If you turn your sled over and put it down on a piece of paper, you can trace an outline of that wooden shape. And that gives you the beginning of a template to make the sled. So after you cut out that template, then you're going to cut your board, you know, just do a drawing about a quarter inch smaller than the shape of that sled. So that is basically how you do the sled. So you're going to mount it on a piece of board. I use comic board. I put a piece of felt or two pieces of felt underneath the design, and then you're going to wrap your linen to the back 
using uh, fabric glue and glue it to the back. And then if you look carefully, there is a twisted cording that's been used around the edges. So that's the little, uh, little red sled. I'll show you, let's see, which booklet did this come from? Hmm. Oh, this came from, here's a, uh, the design worked over two. Again, I'm going to be talking about this in my class. And here's the booklet that that came from. And again, I would look at the bottom of my sled and I would use that to make my template. And then I have one other to show you. And that is, here is the sledding snowman. And he too has been worked over one. Or she, maybe it's a she, I think it's a girl. And here's our um, sledding snowman chart. So I've shown you a lot today. I hope I haven't overwhelmed you. Let me put my tray aside here. Let me look at my notes. Ah, I want to do a giveaway. I haven't done a giveaway in so long. So my plan is, let's see, where did I put all my books? I don't have all of them, but you know what I mean. So one of the things I'm going to give away is I'm going to give a set of the four new designs away. I'm also, I'm going to choose three names. And you have to be a subscriber to win a giveaway. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to give away is one copy of the Christmas Ornament 2 books and one copy of the Christmas Ornament 3 book. And so if you want to write to me and um, just tell me something about your plans for 4th of July. Um, we are going to be, we have a quiet weekend. Um, Sunday we are going to be with family, which will be great and have a picnic. Um, but the rest of the weekend, I'm just going to do my usual stitching, uh, going to the farmer's market, uh, making some dishes for our uh, Sunday gathering, and hoping, having time, having time to do my favorite things. So I'll um, encourage you, you have to be over 18, of course, to win a prize. I will use the number generator to choose our winner, and I'm happy to start giving away things once again. So I have two other things to show you, and it has to do with 4th of July. So I pulled out a couple of um, models that are patriotic. So let me grab this one. Okay. And this is called, the finishing on this is just wonderful. This was done by my uh, finisher, Rita, and um, she mounted it on an old breadboard. But you could actually, I'm going to put, take this off here and show you, let me set that down, the piece off the breadboard because it's easier to show. It's actually a little pocket. So it's been mounted on wool and then she covered buttons and then she did some hand sewing on this little flag that goes across here and also across the top. Um, Sweet Land of Liberty booklet looks like this. So the design is on the cover so you could copy it if you wanted to. I always thought the pocket would be perfect for tiny flags. And then my last patriotic one, let's let me turn this way. This came out a while ago but people are in the mood to stitch patriotic again. So this is um, patriotic. Let me show it like this. Here we go. This patriotic ABCs. You can see I have a little patriotic house and a flag and a school and a watermelon and a banner and a beach house. Uh, there's a horn and a drum and a heart and waves. This was fun to design. And this is, I'm going to set this down because it's hard to hold. This is what um, Patriotic ABCs looks like. And let's see, so there's a long booklet in here. And here on the back is a picture of the whole piece. So I've covered a lot today. I hope um, that you were able to get some good finishing tips or ideas out of this. Please, um, please write and let me know if there are questions I can answer or if there's something that I've missed in this video because I'd like to address that in the next one. So happy 4th to you all. Um, we are so lucky to live in the U.S. 
and I hope you have time to relax. I hope you have time with friends or family. So goodbye. See you soon. Thank you.